The Gorilla's Kitchen is now live here at the Queen Creek Olive Mill. I'm going to introduce you to a very good friend of ours, Angelo Rea. And I got to tell you, just for a second, just over here is where a lot of the magic happens, where all the production, we are in the mill room, and we're going to show you guys the behind the scenes action and how it's all done. Say hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Angelo Rea. I, uh, I'm part of the family here at the Queen Creek Olive Mill, and I've been uh, in the olive oil industry pretty much my whole life. So we'll get started with, with this machine. This is our mill. It's a house mill uh, from Turkey. Um, we are, are able to process around two and a half, three tons an hour. All that happens outside is we, we wash the olives and we defoliate the olives, so take away any of the sticks, twigs, or anything else that gets harvested along with the olives. Mm -hmm. um, so we bring it in here to the building, and this is the hammer mill. So this big motor right here powers the, the hammer crusher. Um, it's essentially a series of four hammers that are spinning, and they crush the olives, including the pits, into a paste. Like I said, after we crush the, uh, crush the olives into a paste, uh, pit and everything, you're gonna malax them, right? So the malaxation is really uh, the first stage when the oil will start to come together and kind of separate from, from the meat and the pits of the, of the olives. So, You'll see kind of some pool, a pool of oil on the top of the paste, um, and that's that's when you know that you're gonna make some really nice oil. But. So what you're saying is after everything has been removed, it's coming in here yep. into the hammer mill, and it fills into these four containers. Is there some? Like a, a temperature control or a certain level that it has to get yeah, to? Yeah, absolutely. So this olive paste is then moved into these four containers. These are malaxers, so they're heat jacketed. You want to bring the paste up to 27 degrees, um, and you're going to malax for about 47 minutes, or excuse me, 45 minutes to an hour, depending on the, the temperature of the paste and the oil content and the variety of olive, right? So. Once, you, once you've been relaxing in here for about 45 minutes to an hour, you're gonna to start to see pools of oil on the top of this paste. So this is filled with paste, right? Okay. So you gotta find the right, the right balance between time and temperature. That's all mal malaxation is. So if you heat up the paste, um, you know, the, the higher you heat the paste, the, the lower, or the less time you have to relax for okay. to, you know, get that oil yield but you will also damage your, your quality of oil. So you gotta find that right balance. You don't wanna heat it up too much, but you also still wanna get you know a good yield, right? So, so after you malax for 45 to, to an hour, um, you're gonna send it through. Which to is the, not long. Canter. I mean, no. I would think that process would take a lot No, it's longer. not too long. In fact, from, from the time that you receive olives mm -hmm. to the time that you're getting fresh oil, you know, out of your, out of your separator, it's only about an hour. So really? this is really the longest the longest part of the process. It's getting everything to a uniform temperature mm -hmm. before yep, it Yep, getting it all to the right temperature and, and really having that first stage of, of the oil molecules kind of coming together and- uh, Starting to separate. Yeah, starting to separate a little solid. bit. It's not really, it's not quite a mechanical separation yet, but it's just kind of, they're naturally coming together. Yeah. Um, and it makes it a lot easier for the decanter to to separate the oil from, from right. the rest of the organic material, so. And so it moves through, you have a, a system that it all moves through. Yeah, so so actually, so this is called, this is batch processing, basically, this yeah. malaxation technology. And um, in some other facilities and other processing facilities, they all they'll actually have what are called cascading malaxers. Okay. So these are really good for when you're getting olives maybe from, you know, a different lot or a different block from your farm or whatever it is, or maybe your, your partner farm in, you know, wherever they are and your other partner farm bring you olives at the same time, but you want to be able to separate them so you can, you know, you know, you can tell the yield right. from, from their olives or, you know what I mean, tell the quality standards from their olives, depending. So you can so you can separate the, the oh. batches, right? So you can have the olives come through, you'll fill up this malaxer, you can have this malaxer going, and these olives can be totally separate from, from these ones, right? Oh, so wow. it's, it doesn't go from malaxer to malaxer in this, okay. in this style of malaxation. It goes just from one malaxer and then you send it through to the bottom through to the decanter. So they're all individual units. It's yes. not like a, yeah. every, anything that goes in here, mm -hmm. or here, they mm -hmm. all don't have to go into the same batch. Yep. You can yep. actually run individuals. Exactly, yeah. That's really cool. These yeah. giant washing machine looking things. That's mm -hmm. what I was thinking. Yeah, if, and you can take a peek inside here, actually. Yeah. 
And so this thing is just spinning basically and, and mixing the paste. Then you shoot the paste over here through to our first stage of separation. Um, this is our decanter centrifuge right here. This thing's sitting at about 3,000, uh, 3, 3,300 RPM. Um, and this is just basically a giant centrifuge. So it's a huge bowl spinning, and then there's a screw inside of that bowl uh, that's spinning in the opposite direction. Um, and so it only takes about five minutes from when you pump the paste through to the decanter for it to come out of the wow. decanter. So it's it's really short. I mean super high speed machine here. Yeah, the pumice will come out that side, so that's the byproduct. That's the all the organic material, the pit, the meat, and most of the water content. Yeah. And then the oil will come out this side. And it's a little bit dirty still, meaning it still has a little bit of organic material, yeah. a little bit of water in it. It's cleaned, it's good. Yeah, it's, it's a, good to drink. I mean I'll taste it out of here of course yeah. I will, but you know But it just has a little bit of the impurities a yeah. little bit and more if you were to bottle it straight, or grit to it. Yeah exactly. If you were to yeah. bottle it straight out of this decanter, your oil would actually um, it would go bad a lot faster because that organic material will lead to oxidation, of course, um, or even fermentation. So you, you got to be really careful. So from here, we're going to send it to our separator. So the separator is essentially our, it's a vertical centrifuge. So it's this, essentially this machine, but it's, it's vertical, it's smaller. It's going to remove the rest of the water and the, uh, the olive meat basically from the, the rest of the organic material in the water from the oil. So, uh, yeah, I mean, the oil, just the fresh oil comes out, comes out of our separator here, comes, fills this tank, and then we move it to our decanting tank. So, um, and then we just decant, and, and then we move it to our storage tanks, where they're nice. temperature controlled, nitrogen purged, so uh, we're able to store it. So, uh, you know, of all the great products, and we talk about uh, extra virgin olive oil, guys, and uh, Angela is going to clear up some of that and tell us a little bit more about what makes a real extra virgin olive oil. And one of the things that the Quick Quick Olive Mill is becoming known for, especially if you're watching a lot of our recipes and watching our shows, is the different flavors. And uh, Angela is going to tell us a little bit about how those flavors come into being, where they show up in the process, and, uh, and how these wonderful creations happen. So there's three main ways that we'll make our flavored oils. Um, the first way is when you co-press the oil. So for instance, the 27 habaneros oil right. that you love, Delicious. right? Yeah. Super hot, super great. We actually just sold out of it for this last season. We're gonna have to make some more you, you soon better. here. You better, I got we'll people take, who need that. Yeah, I know, <laughs> me, me too, me too. Um, so we'll take the fresh habanero peppers and we'll actually crush them with the olives um, right here in the hammer crusher. And then we'll, we'll malax the uh, the crushed olives and peppers together. Wow. So you can't even really walk into this room after you've sent those <laughs> peppers through the crusher. I mean, seriously, you can't breathe. It's it's crazy. For they some have of a our other chili eating contest in this room. Oh man, yeah. While, while it's going room. on, yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to do That's next level right there. I might want to do something a little hotter than habaneros and yeah. you'll find out pepper. about that maybe later on. A couple of the other ways that we'll make our flavored oils uh, the second way is, is blending. So for instance, for our for our lemon oil, mm -hmm. we'll take uh, fresh, local, cold pressed lemon oil. So they actually have a similar process to how you make olive oil, right? But gotcha. they do it with lemons. Um, so we take that fresh, cold pressed lemon oil, and we'll take a very small amount of it, and we'll blend it with our extra virgin olive oil, mm -hmm. and that's how we'll get like our you know our lemon oil, our Meyer lemon olive oil. So the third way that we do our flavored oils um, is infusion. So we'll make our chili oil is used. Uh, it, <clears throat> Is made using infusion so it's basically a giant tea so you'll take you know pounds and pounds of these dried really hot peppers ghost pepper it's a mix of peppers you know ghost peppers habaneros just red chilies um, and then you'll put it into one of these decanting tanks with the olive oil and you let it sit for like two months wow. um, and then that's some flavor and then you'll take that and you can actually that stuff is so hot that you'll actually have to cut it in half with some more extra virgin olive oil just so it's palatable so otherwise you'll burn your Burn your freaking tongue off. You burn your soul. Yeah, burn your soul. Yeah, exactly. That is really cool. So we follow the the process. Pretty much stays the same, uh, except from where the flavors are introduced. So mm -hmm. if you're going with the the peppers, you're pulverizing them together and uh, or infusing at a later time. Mm -hmm. But guys, if you haven't tried the stuff yet, what's your problem? Come on, this is amazing stuff, guys. I hope you gained a, a lot of strong knowledge about the olive oil biz and uh, how it's all made. I'm always fascinated. Uh, not only am I fascinated by how I'm going to use it and whatever recipes we're coming up with, I like to know where we're sourcing the product. It actually matters, guys. And uh, they do it with a great deal of love and care 
and uh, just fantastic products. You can see that they really care about what they do, and uh, and everything is made with love, man. That's Absolutely. how the Ray is doing. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's made made with love, baby. Angelo Thanks Ray right out. here, tall, strapping, handsome young man. Uh, is now working with his dad hand to hand, which I happen to really love. Is the family to see you guys together? Oh yeah, and uh, and making wonderful things happen here every day. Lots of fun. Please, everybody, get out here to Queen Creek Olive Mill. Visit them online. Stick with us on our shows every Thursday. Uh, we're gonna have them in. I promise, I'm gonna cook for this guy. I'm gonna cook for the whole family. Talk about one of the most nervous experiences of my life. We'll be cooking for his father and his mother. Of course, it's, it's uh, that'll freak me out. We'll get through it together, and it'll make for a great episode, guys. Thank you for joining us at Quick Recall Mill today. And uh, Angela, just really thank you. Thanks for coming so out. Much, Thanks sir. for coming out. Yeah. Really appreciate you guys. Yeah.